GamerDude2088, and we're going to talk about how you're going to whoop the wind Rift Beast ass. And on top of whooping his ass, we're going to talk about why why he is the best monster for Rift Beast, period. Now, I could be wrong, but this is just something I discovered all on my own, and I want to just share it. So you guys know what that means. This motherfucker right here is smart. Okay, let's talk about what makes the Wind Rift Beast different from the others. And it's its skill, the Lightning Roar. You know, it says, attacks all enemies three times with a fierce roar and grants the electric shock effect. The damage increases every time the Lightning Roar is used. Now, just like how the Ice Beast was with the freezing air, the Wind Beast has electric shock. And this is your... This is what you're worried about throughout the fight with the Wind Beast. And Electric Shock says the damage you receive will increase under the Electric Shock effect. The re recovery amount you receive will decrease by 50% and you'll be inflicted with continuous damage proportionate to 10% of your max HP every turn. You must reach 100% HP in order to remove the Electric Shock effect and return great damage to the wind beast so pretty much pretty much what the electric shock is you this is the one the one rift where you do want multiple healers like i believe i run three i run three healers in here my main healer bella and two support healers colleen and Y.E. and we're going to get into why Y.E. so good in just a moment but I run, I run uh, three healers, and you could possibly run four. I, I'm, I'm not sure if four would be would be good. It would it be optimal? Because this is still about damage. But I guess it all depends on what monsters you have at that too, which will make a world of difference because of those various reasons. With that being said, let's start talking about what makes Ye so good for this dungeon. Now here's my YE all uh, transmogged out and everything, but uh, I put some leftover runes on her. She don't really have the best. They still need to be kind of level. Uh, I always fail like that, but they still kind of need to be like leveled or what else. I mean, some of what I had laying around, you know, I have her own attack, 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 and that's and that's like the import, important thing with with her. I have her own attack, attack, attack build because. She is one of the well, one of the sky dancers, which they all are attack healers. Now, what makes her so good and actually better than having Chisun or Miyang is well, mo well, I don't have a Chisun, but I I'm familiar with how Chisun works, which I do come to us. Please give me a Chisun. But the way Chisun, the way the way most people build Chisun, they build her as a tank. They want the sustain of her because Fallen Blossoms is really good, and then. The second skill, which is pretty much the same, the amuse, the amuse, you really not you really not worried about how much HP you recover. It's more so of having the attack buff. So that's what make people build Chisun on a tanky build. The same way with Miang, which I have her too. I know a lot of people build Miang for R5 on like a speed attack attack build, which is pretty good. So that makes her viable and the rift beast dungeons but since she's water and has the attribute disadvantage you will be better off either having a monster that has attribute advantage or at least attribute neutrality chisun could be a good option but once again if you have chisun or if you had an extra one you could build but if you had chisun why would you you know waste your time trying to build her differently even though she still will work she will still work with her normal build for this but to but to maximize the amount of damage you have there will be no better choice than why why hands down would just j just wreck i i really want to put some time and invest some resources into building mine so she can just so I can see the full potential of what Y can really do because I know a lot of people was just really confused about her and she's kind of been useless throughout the whole game and now it seems as if I discovered where she really fits it and the Rift Beast is it especially the Wind one so always build Y which makes her optimal 
for the wind as well as the dark and the light Rift Beast. And the re the reason being is the same thing I said, and I think it was, I think I was watching Nightly Gaming when he was explaining how when you, when you uh, raid, you really only need two monsters in, a, in the front line. So this is why I was stressing in the water video about uh, just having two monsters Two monsters that's tanky in the front line. That gives you an option to have someone like Y.E. in the back line. As squishy as she is. Uh, as squishy as she is. You want to build her for the damage. And put out uh, and output as much as you can get out of her. A lot of attack subs if possible. As well as crit rate. This got good attack sub on it. That one got some excellent attack. I would love to grind that attack percent up. But to get as much as, much as you can out of her as possible that makes the amuse even strong because since it's proportionate to the attack power you get to see the full power of the heal as well as her doing she being able to do damage and it's all from the back line okay once again i have a few monsters that i want to go over just to talk about i got to talk about every monster that's good for this in particular dungeon, but I am going to talk about a few monsters that I think could help you if you have them, or if you have them, or or you have the option to be able to get them. I want to start first by my buddy Randy. Randy's unpredictable with his second skill. Sometimes it procs a lot, sometimes it doesn't, but he he can be a good a good uh, choice for attacker. If for some type of attack build, I mean, he he's an option. He wouldn't be the best option, but but I think he would do well in this in this dungeon if you have him. Another monster that I believe is really good for this dungeon. That's if you have this monster, Randy. You have a better chance of getting Randy even if you're free to play, just because he's a nat three. But if you have a Shiwa. On the other hand, she is great because she has a self-heal on her third skill, Phantom Light. So she'll be able to heal herself back back up even when she becomes on under the electric shock effect. So she'll do a good job of keeping herself alive a little bit. Even though it's a selfish skill, she still does a ton of a ton of damage. So that's an that's a choice if you have one. I have one on my second account, so I'll probably use her when I build that account up. And then a monster that I kind of been wanting to build just because I don't have a Chisone, which I think would be pretty good to use in this one, is uh, Atenai with her with her third skill being able to rebalance and rebalance HP as additionally recover HP by fifteen percent. So so she balances HP for everybody and then heals on top of it. And then her second skill. Also applies a little bit of a heal, which could which could be helpful as a as a primary healer, so to speak, as a primary healer if you do have her and if you want to build her. Now, of course, Ye because Ye is Ye is excellent, and I, I'm loving every bit bit of her. I believe Trevor is actually a good monster for this. Trevor would be a good monster for monster for this. But I know a lot of people have Trevor, like a lot of the in-game players have Trevor like on Vampire and everything. Use him as like a farmer. He will be kind of kind of neat to have. One of the key monsters to actually bring in, if you have him, is Perna. Because of Perna's passive being able to recover HP. Being able to recover HP. So basically more, more so for like a violent guild. So if you're like mid game to end game. Perna will be excellent to have on a violent violent build. I think Perna will be just good period. Even if you were to put Perna on like a swift build. For something like speed attack attack or something. Or speed crit damage attack. Probably speed attack attack. Just, just to get as much uh uh just to get as much attack off as possible and really is about the sp really is about the sp uh, about the speed because you have other damage dealers so it's more of a utility for Perna than anything there's another monster that provides great utility just like Perna but like monster that uh, I was thinking about Amon which is also good with this passive that kind of kind of similar to how Perna Perna's is this would be an excellent monster and he's a and he's a farmable monster at that so if you have one, this is great to have in this dungeon 
of course, the same way for like a mid to ear game level for like violent and a swift build, a swift build if, if you're not that far far into the game. And my recommendations is like 180 plus speed, at least that much. Because I'm like, these bosses, these bosses have a lot of speed, so they're going to get those turns pretty quickly. And you want to be able to, you want to be able to get your turns pretty fast and be, be able to rapidly heal yourself. And I think this is probably like the better options for healers because it's more reliable because that electric shock effect come around. I mean, if your monsters are using using their heals, because I'm like, I have monsters with like more so of like, like the monsters I'm using, even with YE, they use, they're using their abilities for more so, more so of the utility rather than the heal. Since they have, a, since she has an attack percent, and I'm saying they because I have Colleen as well in the composition, but since they have an attack buff on those skills that they bring in, that they're using it for the attack buff and not necessarily the heal. So if the heal is not up, having something like Amon or having Perna will be excellent if you have those two. Now Amon, you're able to farm up for those F2P players, so don't feel like you're left out because, you know, I try to gear what I'm talking about to you guys too. Those are a few of the monster choices that will be great for you to have in this dungeon. There's plenty more, but once again, that's just too much to be trying to go over in these videos because they take very long and a lot of planning to put this type of stuff together. I was watching the new Childish Challenge the other day, just seeing what was going on on Childish Play's channel. It's a pretty cool challenge, and he happened to mention, even in the challenge, it's called Vamp It Up. And he, hap and he happened to mention Vampire Runes. And it made me think, because he, he was vaguely talking about it. So, that just made me think, and then watching, watching Nightly Gaming's video about it. Vampire runes is an essential with these dungeons. I mean, if you're a, a late to end game player, generally you guys have all the vamp runes because I don't have any. But vamp, vampire runes really, really works essentially. Now I can't exactly say how you should, how you should uh, use your vampire runes because uh, you know I'm recommending for the lower end players to have tanky monsters in the front. Maybe you can run something not as tanky with vampires that's going to be able to keep itself alive, like Trevor, for instance. I don't know. I can't say I'm learning. We'll figure it out and talk about it later. But I hope this been educational for you guys. And this is the gamer dude signing out. See you when we do the next Riff Beast and whatever we talk about there. And I appreciate all the feedback that I've been getting. Much love to the community. Deuces.